much for joining us today. I'm really excited to teach this webinar, and I really hope that you enjoy it and can take benefits of the information I've put together into your safety case processing. And here are some of the objectives, and we are going to go over the relevant regulatory, I don't want to say requirements, uh, more like guidances in producing good quality case narratives, examine the special situation and challenges, and then define and evaluate critical data elements, and practice the skills necessary for writing quality case narratives for reporting to regulatory authorities. So the narrative based on FDA and EMA and ICH guidance. FDA and EMA and Japan's Ministry of Health and ICH guidance documents ask for a descriptive narrative to explain the subject experience that meets a certain criteria. So it's important to note that this, this is more like a suggestion and recommendation and it's not required, but as we know, we always go by whatever FDA and other regulatory authorities recommend to follow. So, the narratives are written based on for the following criteria are met. One is subject enrolled, uh, which means after signing informed consent in a clinical study or after initiation of study treatment or marketed uh, treatment post-marketing, has experienced one or more serious adverse events, which may have led to a permanent discontinuation of the study treatment or uh, that subject has died and also for adverse events of special interest that are determined in the protocol by the sponsor or required by the regulatory authorities. So these are significant adverse events associated with the mechanism of action being studied or a clinically significant laboratory test results that are of special interest. And events that are clearly unrelated to the investigational treatment or product may be that or, or described very briefly. That means that we don't really dig into or query every single thing for type of adverse events that we know it's not related. Clearly it's not related to the investigational product. But that depends on the sponsor and how they want to capture events again. So the guidelines are there to assist the sponsor to develop a report that's complete and well-organized and easy to review. And to achieve these goals, narrative are best to be written from a template that's already predefined with um, data elements. And it, upfront, the team has agreed on the style and content of it to avoid time being lost. And then the font and other style issues and margins, and these are all defined for each company's convention. So modification and adaptation uh, to the structure presented in the guideline that leads to a better display of communication and information is always encouraged by the um, regulatory authority. So we are flexible in the information that we put in our narrative. And then the project-specific descriptive narrative template should be included in the safety monitoring plan. So it's something that's decided prior to the study and it's put into the safety monitoring plan. So narratives are written on subject and completed studies, and these information can be found in the line listing and safety reports, and also subject and ongoing studies, information in source documents, MedWatch, CIOMS, DCF, and case report forms. Also patient and post-marketing. And for post-marketing, the narrative, the nature of the narrative is a bit different because it's provided by the reporting physician, and sometimes the patients don't report the events or adverse events they experience to the healthcare professional. And sometimes this is the, the spontaneous reports are reported by the patient itself, so uh, we might not have a lot of information. But we do have to get the consent from the patient to follow up with the reporting uh, with the treating physician. Source of information in narratives. MedWatch and SIOMS, case report forms that are filled out by the investigator or site coordinator, DCF, filled out typically by the monitor, medical records, hospital discharge reports, progress reports, email correspondences, literature, uh, telephone contacts, regulatory authorities themselves, and a non-medical source such as internet and digital media and also based on the clinical databases, whether they're locked or unlocked. 
Some principles here. The case narrative must not contain any information that could be used to identify a patient, subject, or reporter, or institution. So we are going to refer only to the role of the individuals and the type of institution. And information should be presented always in a logical time sequence and in the chronology of the patient experience rather than um, the chronology of what the information we receive, the follow-up. So the narrative should serve as a brief maximum length of three pages, comprehensive standalone medical report, and all known relevant clinical uh, data and related data should be in the narrative. Anything that's not related to the event that is being investigated should not go into the narrative.